Hey everybody, I'm Schmerkadaber, and welcome back to This is the Police. <clears throat> it's August 5th, the day that we need three Asians in at work, and we've got it. The Goldenberg says that a janitor was found dead after a stampede at the school disco. Uh, the Freeburg Tribune says that the millionaire bum who won the lottery donates everything to the church. And the fact Freeburg's number one paper says that there's a gay club admitting minors. Uh, potentially turning them gay. Oh my goodness, what a world that we live in, everybody. Where gay clubs can uh, can can force their agenda uh, upon the the great city of Freeburg by admitting minors. My goodness. Okay. Anyway, uh, we are starting our car. Come on, it's going. It's going, and it's going fast and hot. All right. Wolf says he broke his bathroom mirror. Uh, Dad says that's seven years of bad luck, but I know it's a silly superstition. It'll probably only last seven hours, but it might be a good idea for me to take off. Wolf. No. No. You can get another mirror. I'm so tired I can hardly walk straight. Nope. Sorry, Percy. Keep coming in. Darius, I got tickets to watch the filming of a TV show. I've always wanted to be on TV. Can I have the day off? Um, yeah, but come in tomorrow. I drank too much. I don't think I can hold it together. Can I go home? Um, Iwamoto? No. We need Asians. We need Asians. I won't make you do anything today, though, if that makes you feel better. Um, okay, we've got a stripe, and, um, yeah, I think that, uh, that I'm gonna have to save this stripe, actually. Um, I think I'm gonna have to save it so that I can give it to Rex Kwon Do, right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely the case. Let's start the day. Let's have at it. Let's see what the world has to offer us today. Look at all of our records, man. We've got so many records now. Especially this one, This Train by Turk Murphy. Let's hear it. What is this train, Turk Murphy? Explain it to me. Through music. Oh, very nice. Now, it's very, very quiet, but that's okay. All right. Uh, paid snitch. 500 bucks. That's fine. Jack, keep up the good work. We'll make sure your final days at the PD are much more comfortable. You're welcome, Mr. Mayor. And the Mafia is giving us $10,000, basically, for the sale of explosives. I'm going to take it all this time. Because um, I've made City Hall happy. My cops should be relatively happy, except for maybe Iwamoto, because he's drunk. Uh, but we've got all the Asians that we needed, so um, he'll be better tomorrow. We won't send him out today. Destruction of property. Chinatown dormitory. A student reported seeing a truck drive into the yard of the hostel. A fat man climbed out, began to slice up a bench with a chainsaw. Some other students tried to intervene, but the man threatened them with the chainsaw, saying, I asked you nicely to keep quiet at night. Now you can park your yellow asses somewhere else. Okay, Asians. Off you go. And, uh, you know what? Asians plus Purdy. No? Asians plus... Plus... Yancy, yeah. Off you go. This train, la la. All right. Uh, oh, a pretty quiet morning. Just one thing. Plus, of course, the. Uh, oh, okay. It's more serious than we thought. All right, Beard Bros, get out there. You can handle it. You can help the Asians and Yancy handle it. And the Beard Bros will have it take care of. Assault with a deadly weapon. A uh, call has come in from the security of the law office of Johnson, Juergen, and Katz. She reports that a woman wearing an expensive fur coat and high heels entered the offices of the senior partners of the firm and asked the secretary not to disturb them. Shortly thereafter, shots rang out. Oh, my goodness. Gibbons? Purdy? Scanlon? Sure. Percy? SWAT team? Go. Go handle it. We can't have... Ladies in fur coats going in and murdering people, or potentially people murdering ladies in fur coats. It goes both ways. We can't have it happen. It's very important. All right. Destruction of property. Report. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Very nice. Nicely done. I didn't say civilians unharmed, but it also didn't say that a civilian died, so I guess we're okay there. Great job. Great job. Everybody took care of it. Teamwork makes the dream work, as I said. The Sands need help. Oh, okay. Assault with a deadly weapon. The office door is closed, but inside the sounds of men screaming, gunshots, and breaking glass can be heard. Um, swipe the secretary's keys. 
Bald man in a suit is laying in a pool of blood. A woman in a fur coat is standing on the table, taking aim at two other men who are hiding behind an overturned bookcase. Um, drop your weapon right now. Excellent. And unfortunately, Percy did not die. That is too bad. Uh, but either way, the Sands need help. They need two people. So we're going to wait for people to get back. Very, very nice. And uh, some punks ransacked the house of a family member. It seems like they were looking for something. Something other than money. Maybe a notebook with a list of important contacts. Let's lock up these scumbags before they can do any real damage. I agree. I absolutely agree. So we're going to send the Beard Bros to handle it. All right. Oh, man, the Beard Bros. What a great addition that they've been. The Sophocles Theater of Drama. Dear Mr. Boyd, the TV show I produced, Justice for All, suffered a terrible drop in ratings last month. Our poll suggests our viewers stopped finding the shows believable. We're currently shooting the next season, and for one episode, we need a real cop who will portray a cop pervert who's kidnapping young girls and raping them in his car. We don't have a huge budget, but I think we can afford a couple thousand for you and for the cop who will play the part in the show. Plus, everyone in the city will see him in the show. This is the perfect opportunity for you, Iwamoto. You'll probably get to go home after this. The love that you're drunk for it, it's like total realism in acting. You're, you're, you're doing the doing. It's the reality of doing. Get there, get drunk, and pretend to rape some people. Off you go. All right. Iwamoto, coming through in the clutch. I knew I had you come in today for a reason. Other than that we needed Asians here. But there's been a bomb threat at the Bank of Freebird. Call just came in from a bank branch in the center of the city. A man entered wired with explosives. He threatened to blow himself up along with everyone nearby unless he was allowed to speak with the press and TV within the hour. The man claims that the bank took away his house after failure to repay a loan. A loan which he says he never took out. Alright, everybody, off you go. Uh, looks like I can't send the SWAT team. I think we'll be okay. We can handle it. Uh, we've got a good team back now, so that's nice. Uh, we'll be set there. Uh, Beard Bros have done their work. It looks like uh, our, our drunken friend Iwamoto has, uh, has handled his situation. Perhaps even the drunken master. Fuck you, Boyd. Take your fucking orders and shove them up your better half. I quit. Fair enough, Iwamoto. Fair enough. <laughs> we only needed you for today and you're an alcoholic, so uh, you can go fuck yourself too, Mr. Iwamoto. All right. But thanks for the cash, Derek Allen, and you are very, very welcome for the help. All right, looks like our four, uh, our four here, the Asians plus Yancey, handled all of the problems at the bank. Very, very nice. Uh, looks like we've got something going on at the police station. What do we need? Labor market? Oh, look at this. Okay, we can hire Odin Beard. Oh, Odin Beard. Thank God for you. You're hired on to shift B. I hope you're not an alcoholic. All right. <laughs> Odin Beard. We're going to build him up. In fact, he might get the stripe uh, instead of Hulkamania. But Rex quando has been here for a while. I think he deserves it. So I think I will give it to him. I think it's important that we reward our good cops, especially when they leg drop things. Uh, our family has several city officials on the payroll. One of them is ushering some valuable items through the public transport system. Goods are slated to ship out tomorrow, but it looks like there's some punks who want to dump the cargo overboard before it clears the dock. Our man in the port says they bribed some guards. Too bad they weren't smart enough to bribe the police. Percy? Um, Scanlon? Off you go. All right. Cool, cool, cool. We're helping the Sands out. We're doing great work. Uh, we, 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 we got Iwamoto, a potential acting career, which is really, really nice. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's an addict. He's an addict. And we can't have addicts on the force. It's just not, uh, it's, it's not an okay thing. All right. Destruction of property at Mrs. Sofa Furniture Store. The store manager reports that a long-haired old man with a large knife broke in. He's ripping out the lining of our sofa, shouting, where's my money? Put this cook in a straitjacket. He's obviously sick. Anyway, come quick. We're hiding in the back. All right. Cool, cool. Uh, Gibbons. Purdy. Yancey. So... Crumb. Um, clear all those. Gibbons. Purdy. Beard Bros. You got this. All right. Uh, this is so good. I've got so many people with stripes. I've got, like, yeah. Oh, man. I think that Kochi could probably deserve another stripe as well, maybe when we get another one. I wonder what the mechanic is for getting stripes in this. I'm really not sure. Okay, we've got some new frames in our robbery. 
Um, so we might be able to get this. Okay. James Duff, the pharmacist, says, The night before last, everything was fine when I left. I just closed up the pharmacy like usual and went home. It was a little past nine. At exactly half past nine, I was at the bus stop. That I'm sure of. In the morning, I went back to work like usual. As soon as I saw the broken window, I called the police. Uh, Smeed Roby, a homeless guy, says, Yes, I hang around at night near the pharmacy, but I don't remember much. One guy said to drink for my health and threw a $50 bill in my hat. I had a little celebration. After that, I ran right to the store, but that's all I remember. I woke up this morning, and the cops were all over. I can't remember the man's face. I was more interested in the $50. All I can recall is the light struck something under his jacket, something like a doctor's clothes. Thank you, Mr. Roby. Uh, Carrie Duff, the pharmacist's wife. James came home a couple hours later than regular, but that's not so unusual. The insurance refused to pay for the treatment he needs, so now we're always short on money, and he's always trying to find part-time work. Not that anything ever pans out. He's willing to take on even the most difficult and dangerous work. Yesterday, for example, when he changed his clothes, stones and debris fell out. I'm starting to really worry about the hellish jobs he's getting himself into. Slovinko Mavzer, the pharmacy owner, says, Those damn bums who are always begging near my pharmacy are up to no good. Obviously, one of them thought he'd be daring and take me for all I'm worth. Look at the guy. He's barely keeping on his feet. Where'd he get the money for all that alcohol? I've never seen anyone even throw him a dime. Felicia Ding, an experienced pharmacist, says, The medicine they stole is... Deprazicaps. It's very expensive, but there's not a lot of street interest, so I doubt it'll sell on the black market. I don't think it was sold in for resale. Okay. I think it was clearly the doctor. Like, I, I think that that's quite obvious. Um, yeah, guy with doctor's clothes on underneath. Okay. Um, breaking through a window? I don't think that that happened. Gives money, but he gave him a $50 bill. 50 bucks. Yeah, drunk. There. Okay. I don't think we've got the right frames here, but... Um, guy... Guy gives money. Opens the door. Takes the stuff. Right? Uh, I don't think that, that any of this is right. Broken window. I don't... This is weird. Gives money, opens the door, takes the stuff, breaks the window. I don't think we've got this one. I don't think we've got the right frames, everybody. It's too bad. Okay. Uh, how about this armed robbery, though? Do we have... Oh, we did get some new frames. Great. Okay. Guy comes flying at the van. That we know for sure. Um, what is this? A non-camo bike. Okay. Is this... There we go. Submachine guns, right? Okay. Um, van goes over the curb. What's the difference in these? Diamond security. So it's definitely this one. Um, they take the stuff. The guy gets out of the van, right? And then the guys with the submachine guns attack. But the thing is, is like, Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, armed with a pistol, yeah, oops. Um, so, what we're missing here is the frame that has the overturned van. None of the, the van is not overturned. But, okay, all right. Um, camo bike, camo bike. Followed by van jumping the curb. Um, hold on just a second here. Uh, the Diamond Protection Security Agency. Um, so it's definitely that, but... Uh, jumped the medium, went straight for the van head-on. like so The van tried to... went off the road and overturned. Yeah, the, th the thing is, is like... This is not overturned. But it's the best we got. Um, the robbers took everything of value. Uh... When the bloody guard emerged from the van, uh, armed with a pistol, yep, and then the guys returned fire with their submachine guns. Yeah, I think we're missing the overturned van, which is too bad. Um, do we have all of our detectives on, on the case? It looks like we do. All right. Uh, there was really a bundle of cash hidden in one of the sofas. <laughs> nice! Okay. Um, 
sell the money? Money? Well, it, it, it is apparently easier to money launder now, so let's go ahead and do it. Uh, we'll definitely share that with our officers when we get the cash for that. And uh, we've got the new frames. We've already looked at them, though. So, unfortunately, we don't have what we need, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, but that's the end of the day. We did okay today, other than our, our drunken... Our drunken Asian gentleman um, quitting on us because we sent... Weird. That chip's never going to fall. Interesting. Uh, because we sent him out to, to be on a TV show. Of all the reasons to quit, you quit because we wanted to get you paid more without doing police work for being on television. What a dick. All right, the Golden Bird says the truckers are unhappy with the suburban roads. Uh, the Freeburg Tribune says, fire at the puppet theater, two actors dead. Oh no. And the fact, Freeburg's number one paper says, Freeburg gymnast wins regional competition. Congratulations, but I don't think that's as big a story as the uh, the two puppet actors dying. Um, I hope that Kermit and, and the Swedish chef and, and Gonzo and all of them are okay. Uh, because I love them, man. I love those guys. New movie opening today starring my favorite actor. Uh, God damn it, Gordon. No. No, you can't. Court's deciding the custody case of my children today. Um, all right, Birch Jr., you can have the day off. My cats ate some cream past its sell-by date. They had diarrhea all night. They're better now, but I'd like to spend the day with them. All right, Spain, but come in tomorrow. And we've got a stripe, and that stripe is definitely going to Rex Quando. Promote. Yes! Okay, Rex, congratulations. You are a single Chevron police officer. And, uh, and, and you, you get all of the respect that is expected, uh, to be given to said police officer. All right, what do we got here? Chimen by John Sangster. Let's hear it. Show me what it's like to feel joy, John Sangster. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I love it. I love it. All right, Mafia, give me the... Woo! 13,000! Share with the staff. Thank you. All right. Attempted murder in the suburbs. A girl shouted over the phone that her grandmother has been killed. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Rex. Birch. Darius. And, uh, and how about Millsap? Proceed. Go. It, it, it may be a false alarm, but Grandma also may be dead. Who knows? Um, okay. Cool. Cool. Oh, we're doing great, everybody. I'm very happy with the direction this is going. We've got 80,000 bucks in the bank right now. Um, okay, there's a fight at the city center. A few drunks were playing darts, and one of them got one in the shoulder. A fight broke out, which was quickly joined by other patrons of the bar. Cecil, Van Dahl, Yildirim. Everybody. Take care of it. It's very, very close to the station, so we shouldn't have any problem getting there, getting it done, and getting back. All right. Road to the house is strewn with the corpses of drowned dogs. The lights inside the house are on, but the door is locked. Holy shit. Um. Call through. A bleeding elderly woman is lying on the floor of the living room. Um. Check if she's still alive. Holy shit, dude. Who was the offender? What the hell happened? Rex, your first case as a promoted officer has started off very strangely, but you did a great job, so uh, I'm not going to complain. Nice work. Nice work. Okay. What do we got next? A report on the fight. Handled. Handled no problem. And we, we sent a ton of awesome people and the paddy wagon to take care of it, so I didn't expect that there would be any issues. Uh, but now, they're all back, and uh, it was easy. Nice, easy thing. Okay. Oh, that was weird. Drowned dogs? Who the hell was drowning dogs? And why was Grandma bleeding? What the hell? Uh, we'll never know, ladies and gentlemen. We'll never know. Okay, the Sands need help at the Bank of Freeburg. Uh, Family Bank just called in a report of a strange man in a leather jacket with fake documents trying to empty one of our accounts. Obvi obviously, it's one of Varga's agents, but it's such a stupid move. We don't want to get our hands dirty. Just lock him away. You got it. Birch, take care of it. Okay. Birch is like the Sands guy, man. <laughs> he knows. He is there when the Sands need him, and I'll bet he's gonna end up as rich as me. I can't believe he's still on the team, honestly. It's, it's a shock to me that Birch is even still here. What an amazing cop. 
Uh, Re Rex Quando has um, has uh, taken over uh, Birch's position at this point, but still. Suspicious individual at the touch of Dionysus Liquor Store. A cashier just called in, her voice in a whisper. Two suspicious black men have entered the store. They spent a few minutes browsing the rack with the expensive whiskey, and now they're whispering to each other and looking back at me. Looks like they're planning on robbing the store. Okay. Yildirim, Darius, Foxman, and, uh... Millsap. Go. Maybe it's a false alarm. They might not be planning to steal anything. Maybe they're, like, talking about how much, uh, they want to, like, ask you for your phone number, um, to take you on a hot date. Um, well, for one of them, or perhaps both. They may be in an open relationship. Who knows? Uh, you know, that might be the case. You can't just suspect that people are going to steal. They might just be in love with you. All right. Men were unarmed and just doing some shopping. They were picking out an expensive bottle of whiskey as a gift for their grandfather on his anniversary. Okay, cool. No problem there. The 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 police are on their way back without any issues. Uh, but there has been a theft at the river bank. A passerby witnessed three people trying to break into an ATM. A pickup truck was parked nearby, its engine on, with another man behind the wheel. Looks like they were trying to grab the ATM and carry it away in the truck. Um, okay, this sounds like a case for Vandal. Shano and Rex. Go take care of it. Oh man, God, I love this game. Like it's really relaxing and uh, and kind of easy to handle right now. I don't know if it's gonna get much more complex than this, but like. There's, there's an awful lot of waiting in this game, but that's okay. All right, Situ situation is more dangerous than they thought. Uh, in that case, let's send Yildirim, Millsap, and, uh, and Darius. Okay, the Sands need some help at the business center. They need two guys. Uh, some punks are throwing Molotov cocktails into the office building where we made book. Eyewitnesses say the idiots keep throwing bottle after bottle, even though the building's already falling apart. They're probably still somewhere nearby. Birch, you can handle flamethrowers. That means you can handle Molotovs. And Robbins, go help out too. All right. Birch and Robbins. Now, that is a dream team. Our snitch and our ancient man. Uh, our ancient flamethrower defeating man. Off to, uh, to stop the bad guys from hurting the bad guys. Ah, what a world, everybody. What a world we live in. Okay. What does my deputy have to say right now? Anything? Um, I could throw a barbecue. Meh. All right. Uh, we got some new frames for the robbery. Good. Okay, let's open up that investigation and see what we got. Um. Okay. Let's, uh, let's clear everything here. It looks like more of the... Ugh. This just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. How about he unlocks the door. He takes the stuff. He... Was the window broken? Really? He breaks the window, unlocks the door, takes the stuff... And gives money to the guy? No. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it is the homeless guy. Bam. 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 No? I just don't... I don't know why this guy who works here would break the window, but maybe he did. Maybe he did. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I still just don't feel like we've got the right frames, but, um, okay, broken window. So there was a broken window. Old, one guy said, drink to my health and threw a $50 bill in my hat. Um, that's him putting pennies in his hat or coins in his hat. Uh, okay. It's gotta be the doctor. And I feel like we're missing, um... We're missing a frame for the doctor putting big money on him. But, like... We could have... Like, this is the first thing that happened. And then... He locks the door, smashes the window, and 
throws money on the guy. I don't know. I don't know. Now, the thing is, is, like, Mrs. Ding says... She doubts it'll sell well in the black market. So, like, the... And on top of that, Mrs. Duff says that uh, the insurance refused to pay for the treatment. So it makes sense that he would take it for himself. It's got to be that he's taking it for himself. Um, I think we're missing a frame. I really do. All right. We did get a new frame for this. What does this look like? What the hell is that? Uh, <laughs> all right these are these are not working out as expected um <clears throat> three bikers armed with submachine guns camouflage bikes first biker jumped the median went straight for the van we've got that uh the van tried to avoid the collision and flipped that's the thing like okay okay um, comes right at the van on a camo bike. That's obviously the first one. Okay. Um, van flips over. Maybe they went to the van first. Goes to the van. Grabs the stuff. Uh, guy pops out, and they get out the big guns. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Um, guy gets out with pistol, and, uh, and then they break out the, the old submachine guns. Where are the submachine guns? Oh, and then they're, like, wearing the stuff. <laughs> God damn it. I, I don't know. I don't know. I still think we're missing an overturned van frame. But let's, um, let's say... No, 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 no. Okay, camo bike. Um... Van with diamond protection logo goes over the median. Uh, guys, the thing is, is like, we don't really have one of them emptying their weapons so much. Um, guys put their stuff in the bag, right? They take all the stuff and put it in a bag. Um... The guard pops out with his pistol, and then the guys empty their guns. Like, that's... Guys, uh... Put on... What the fuck, dude? Um, okay, okay. Guys... What does this last frame look like? It's, uh, just, uh, it's the dead guard. Um, okay. So, guys put stuff in bag. We're about to leave when the guy pops out. No. I still think we're missing frames, man. Ah, ah, we just can't solve this case. I'm getting upset about it. All right, but at least my cops are doing well getting things done um what are my okay yeah so I've, i don't have either of the things i need for this for these cases dude I, I don't i don't have the information needed my detectives are not coming through when i need them the most but the day's over so let's end it let's just end the day the sands are now up by 10 like i hardly even need to help them anymore i think they're doing fine okay um order to work tomorrow shift b uh, has a whole bunch of people coming in tomorrow, so we're good. Um, 
let's end the day and uh, and and see what's gonna happen next. Um, now we don't have a, a cutscene, so uh, I'm starting to get frustrated at these uh, these detective cases, man. My detectives are not putting in the kind of work that I expect from them. I hired them for a reason, and they're really blowing it. Uh, so, thank you everybody so much for watching. You know I appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you later. I'll see you around. I will see you next time. I can't wait to play more This is the Police, and I can't wait to do it with you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.